All right, everybody. Today is going to be the third video in the series on Ruby metaprogramming. Uh, metaprogramming is a really deep Rails topic. Ugh, Rails, Ruby topic. Uh, it's certainly used a lot by Rails, but uh, it's it's really a deep Ruby topic that. Uh, it's something I think that you need to see a lot of practical examples of and so uh, in the first video we did the send method and in the second one we did the define method method uh, so in some of the examples I used I think that they were useful for illustrating the point but I think we can do better uh, so today is going to be a combination of those two and we're going to use them to make a very basic ORM so that I think it's going to be really exciting. So you, you know, it's going to be a little bit different than the Rails Active Record model, but pretty similar. So let's get into it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So we here we've what we've got is code, right? <laughs> That's shocking, I'm sure. But okay, so you have this class called model. That's just going to be the base model that we're going to work with. As you can see down here, we're extending model to be an account, so that's going to be one of our models. But getting back to this model, what does it do? Well, the first thing it does, it defines a class variable called all fields. So, what are cl class variables, as you know, or you probably do? They're just variables that sit on the class so that there's only one per class. So, you can have many objects per class, but there's only one of this particular variable for the entire class. That's opposed to like an instance variable where each object has its own variable. Okay, so I mean that's kind of basic object oriented programming stuff, but I just wanted to be clear. So this this double at and then the variable name means that we're declaring this uh, as a class variable. And so what we're doing is we're defining all the fields. So just like, you know, we look at our little m account model down here, we've got balance, address, and name. Forget about this field thing for right now, but just those those three things, that's what's going to be in, in, in our account model, right? So we want to keep track of that somehow, so we use all fields. And as soon as this class gets constructed, we're going to set it to an empty array. And so what this is, it's going to hold the name of our fields that are going to be on our model, because like the account model is going to have these three fields, right? And the only thing that it's going to, it's, I mean, it's going to need to keep account of like what fields it has. So as you'll get into it, we'll see a little bit more. So the first method is the def self. So this is again a class method, uh, self dot field, and then we pass in the name. So all this is going to do, if you look in here, is we're going to say, okay, this all fields that we created, this class variable, just stick name into that array so that we have a list of all the fields on that model. So when this model is first created, I mean, you're never really going to create the model more than once in your program once you've written it. Uh, I mean, you may create it more than once, but it's not going to change like what fields are going to be there most likely. So you just add it to the field, so we'll have it for later. And then you do the attribute accessor, which if you remember just adds getters and setters for uh, anything that you specify. So really what we're doing and what we do down here is we say we're calling field balance. So we pass this balance symbol into this, and so it adds it to the all fields, and then it creates this attribute accessor called name. Okay, so again, if it's not totally clear, like we'll get there. But so the other thing that you'll see here, the only other method, the only thing else that this model does is it goes and says def initialized. Initialize is just the method that gets called when your object's created. Uh, so it says at fields equals all fields. And you'll see why that matters in just a little bit in the second example that we have. But just just know that like we're assigning all the fields to uh, this instance variable fields, which actually when I think about it, it may not be necessary, but that's okay. It works for the example. So what we do is, again, we create this account, you know, it descends from model, then we say the fields that we're going to have, this is the way we have to specify this, right, in this case, we're going to dynamically add these fields. So we say balance, address, and name, and then if you look here, right, we've got a equals account.new, then we can, just like a Rails model, 
assign a dot balance to a million address to this address and name as Mr. Mukal. So then we'll do a dot inspect and we can see exactly what happens exactly with this code. So we'll come back here and just so everybody knows all this code is publicly available on the GitHub repo that I have. So the link is in the, uh, the I want to say comment section, but the description section, sorry. Yeah, it's there. So you can do this, you can run this exact same stuff. So we're going to run Ruby define method dot RB and nothing is output because I said a dot inspect to look at the object, but I didn't say puts. So let's say puts a dot inspect, clear that out and do this again. Okay, so you see what is set here? There's this instance variable, balance, address, and name, the symbols, like what we knew, like what we said anyway. And then balance, address, and name are actually set just like we expected. So interestingly enough, this is exactly what Rails does. If you've worked with Rails at all, it's got the schema.rb file where it keeps track of what exactly your model should look like. And when your Rails app starts up, it looks up that particular model and then says, okay, who you know who do I need to create these attribute accessors for and it does more than that but that's just a good example of how it works in our case you know over here excuse me this VI thing doesn't always work the way I had intended but uh, over here our difference is we're not running it from a file we're just creating this through a method and interestingly enough if you've used MongoDB there's there's an ORM wrapper called mongoid and this is exactly how it works which is why I've stolen it for this example because you actually declare it in the model and actually that in my opinion makes things a lot easier to use because you always know or it's very quick to look up exactly what fields should be on your model okay so that being that that's cool but so now we've seen exactly how we would use some of this stuff right but you may be saying to yourself, wait, this doesn't really show me how to use the define method at all, which you're absolutely correct. The reason I used attribute accessor is because it does all this stuff for you, right? You, you, not, you don't end up having to create the methods yourself. But if you did want to create them, I mean, we could get rid of attribute accessor and just say define method and then name and then... Okay, so like I said, this is a little bit of cheating, right? Because we're just using the attribute accessor and not the define method. So how does this really even help us? Well, I think it does show us generally, right, uh, you know, how you can use uh, some dynamic elements, some metaprogramming elements to do things. But let's just do this for real with the define method. Okay, so this is in define method 2rb so here again we've got our model we've got all fields we've got our initialize here and we're setting all fields to fields which again we'll get to later uh, and this time though we're creating this instance variable called values which is a hash and this is actually going to hold all of our fields as you'll see in just a minute so or i should say hold the values for all of our fields that's what values is going to do so we have, again, the field method, and we start off again by every time we create a field, we add it to that all fields class variable. Then we, now we're going to call define. So what we're going to say is define a method for name, which we're passing in as balance is the first one, right? And we're saying in this actual method, what we're going to do is just recall or retrieve at values name. So we're saying at values balance in this case right if we're using balance and the first time of course nothing's going to be there because we haven't set it yet so we go down to here send define method pound and this time we're doing an interpolated string to where we're doing name equals do value value is going to be the number we're passing in so just to make this more clear because I know that is a little confusing if we look at balance right we're calling balance and we're saying equals so it's the equals method and then we're passing in this million dollar value or million it's not it's not dollars necessarily but we're passing that in as value 
And so we come into our hash and we say, okay, look up values named balance and assign it value. And that's how this guy knows who to call. I mean, you're just setting this on a hash, right? They're just glorified getters and setters, but you're creating them yourself here. So then you say same stuff as before, and we'll say a dot puts, uh, whoopsie, that's not at all what we want to say, <laughs> puts a dot inspect, and we'll see if that worked. So we'll go over here. This is, whoopsie, Ruby 3, whoops, man, I cannot type, okay, Ruby define method 3.rp. And that is totally not the right file. Sorry. This is what happens when you don't script things. Ruby define method 2. Okay. So there you go. Now we have all the same fields as before. And then values is balance with a million. Address is, you know, our 212 Main Street. And name Mr. Moo Cow. So again, we've accomplished the same, we've accomplished the same things. But now we've actually done some dynamic programming. We're now dynamically adding these methods. And again, this is exactly what Rails does when you know, you're dealing with your model and you're like, how does it have all these crazy methods? I don't even know where they're being added. Well, it does these sort of things. So the same thing with routes. If you've ever seen the, the routes that Rails will generate, they're actually methods, right? Um, where it'll be like category categories path and things like that well it generates that based on the model and creates these methods dynamically that are then available so okay so that was sort of useful right but let's just change a little bit about this file because now we don't know that it all worked we know that the setter worked right here but we don't know that we can actually say puts a dot balance because we haven't used an attribute accessor so what will that actually do? And we'll also do puts a dot address. Okay. Name. I think you can live without, but so okay. Oopsie. Yep, there it goes. N you have all your values. So both of them work. Both your getters and setters seem to have worked just fine. Now there's you know a promise that I made here that you would be able to use both, right? Well, we've used the define method, but now let's use send and see how that fits into this equation or how it can. So let's open up the third define method and I'm back to using the attribute accessor here. It doesn't really matter obviously in this case, but I just wanted to demonstrate how you would use the send. So this is the extra method that we have here. It's called print. And what it does is it iterates over each field and it passes in the name field and then it puts out to the screen the, the output for field. So basically, this gives you the opportunity to say, listen, I want to look at what all my fields are. How do I do that? That's what this does. So let's just run the output real quick and down to three. And now you see, I mean, everything's being set the same, I should show you. I mean, we're setting all these things the same, and then we're calling a.print, which is our method right here. And there you go, it prints out everything that's there. And again, so what it's doing, if it's, this is what I was saying before, that really I was assigning like all fields to this instance variable, which really isn't necessary. We could have just called all fields here, pretty much like at all fields and that should work just the same actually yeah so it does so yeah let me this is going to be like removed in the the final code that you get online you don't even need this initialize anymore oh yeah you you will actually need it in the second example but for this first one you wouldn't need it um so yeah so Sorry, I'm just going around in circles here, but 
essentially, again, what you're doing since you've created this list of all your fields, when you create it, you can now dynamically call each method because that's send is say, saying, here's a message. I'm looking for this method. What do you have for that value? And that's why you're getting that on the screen. So hopefully that was clear enough. And this gives us the first concrete real world example of when you, or at least practical example of when you would actually use this method. Uh, and so this gives you a little bit of taste for dynamic programming. Rails uses it a lot, and I know some of the other frameworks do as well. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Hopefully it was clear enough. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.